I don't blame the rappers. I don't blame the basketball players. I don't blame uh, the football players. I blame professional black men who have abandoned the black community for a life in the suburbs, even if he has a white, excuse me, a black wife. Even if he has a black wife, you're still in the suburb, far out of reach of the black boys who need you. And I don't think enough responsibility has been laid at the feet of black men for abandoning our women, our daughters, and our sons in the black community for a much more comfortable life in a white neighborhood. Before I get into what I want to talk about in this video, I want to remind you guys of this oldie but goodie. You may not remember this one. Take a listen. What do you think the challenge is that women are having, black women in particular, mm -hmm. when it comes to becoming a wife? Keeping it 100? Yes. There's not enough eligible black males who fit the needs of black women. Mm. Ouch. By the time you dissect the demographics of finances, sexual orientation, uh, what you end up drilling down into, because black women tend to want to marry black men. Right, right. So black women are excelling, they're getting accelerated degrees, graduate degrees, doctorate degrees, they're starting businesses. Black women are running circles around men. Circles. Right. And it's also shown in research that women want to marry on their same level of financial and educational status. Yeah. So if you're a black woman making $150,000 a year with a master's degree, you tend to want to marry a black man on that same level or higher. If black women are excelling at such an accelerated rate, mm -hmm. How do men keep up with? What do you think the challenge okay. is so that women are having? If you may have heard this video before or not, but one of the things I think that that's really interesting, especially when you hear all of this hate for passport bros and and people are talking about how dare you go overseas and all that kind of stuff, is that you're kind of seeing like this this kind of growing disdain for not just average men, but average men having standards, right? And on the other side of it, I think you're seeing. In, on, on the, the woman's side, you're just seeing that women just don't need average men. They don't need average men. As a matter of fact, I think you're starting to see that women, in Western women just don't need marriage. Marriage is, is a luxury as to the point where you don't need a man if it's just an average man. If you're going to get a man, get an extraordinary you know, almost a guy out of a fairy book type of guy. And if you can't get that guy, it's not even worth it. That seems to be the prevailing theme. And that's why I want to talk about the three ladies I'm going to talk about today. So we know about Naomi Osaka announcing that she's having her first child and, you know, she's a heartthrob or, you know, she's the, the or at least she was kind of the heartthrob of Japan because, you know, she kind of bridged the gap and she was really polite and nice and soft-spoken, but she kind of sort of broke one of the commandments of being a starlet in Japan. And that is, you gotta get married first. But we're seeing that there are some places that are not gonna swallow the single motherdom whole like America does. And so I'm gonna show you an example. And this is Isha Sise. She announced this, I think it was just yesterday, that she's a single mother at 47. Now, there are a couple of angles to this. The first angle is she was married. She was married. Now, I'm not sure what happened in their marriage, but for whatever reason, they divorced without having children. And just to get you an idea, like, I mean, she's absolutely stunning. I, I remember watching CNN several times and I had to Google her because I was really struck. She's from Sierra Leone, and I think she was uh, she was raised in the UK, I believe. I'm, I'm not too sure about that, but but you know she has a really beautiful accent, very just a stunning woman. And to see her get to 47, never have children, and then become a single mother. Now the point of why this matters is because she has a nonprofit that's called women can lead everywhere right or w dot e can lead or something of, along that line and there she's mentoring young girls across africa you can see i grew up the sense that anything that anything is possible quite simply i believed i could lead i want to foster that same confidence in other young girls so serving girls in sierra Leone and across the continent of africa so 
this is a whole group of young girls who have seen you know isha you know be their mentor and as a mentor she does this and this is very along the lines of what's happening in american culture where oh, we just need the sperm from the guy we'll take it from there and you see that's what what that's doing to the black community but what i find really interesting about the fact that her being such a prominent figure i mean she was on cnn for a good seven or eight years cnn international by the way and for her to be this kind of uh, starlet slash role model and to say you know what single mother 47 there's a whole this is making an impression on a large number of young african girls and it's going to be very interesting to see how much of this modern uh way of looking at womanhood and pregnancy and marriage and and how if marriage is actually necessary with a mother and a father raising the kids how much that's going to spread through africa because as i'm about to tell you it's kind of a little bit of a different story in japan that brings me back to osaka naomi now in the black community what she did in terms of just getting pregnant and not being married first okay it's, it's not a big deal in the black america the people are like hey great for her we're so happy you look at the shade room comments she gets thousands of likes on the on the whatever but here is a different story people don't play that game the same way here and i'm gonna be frank with you she lost money she lost money doing this i'm going to show you some comments on a message board that are going to kind of illustrate this so this is a message board from yahoo news and you know it's funny enough yahoo's still really big here but it's it's talking about osaka and announcing she's really happy looking forward to it and, you know this just a few comments but people still comment this way and i want to look at the comment that got the most likes so here's a person that's saying not her not her not her today right so i see so she missed the tournament then she announced the pregnancy and then she's going to get married that's what I'm thinking. And then he said, well, Junjo Gyaku. So yeah, like the order is, it would be better if she did this in the opposite order of marriage and then get pregnant and then miss the tournament, right? And then the next comment is basically like, my pace to get her. So she's kind of doing her career at, 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 in a way that she feels is best for her or whatever. And she's, he says, uh, maybe, kind of like she's going to separate herself from people or kind of she's not going to identify with her audience doing that by missing tournaments and you know not really planning her life out in that order now in america we have grown so accustomed to single motherhood that people would race to the rescue and say you guys how could you think that way but this country is not trying to have listen there are men in here in this country that are investing thousands of dollars in their young girls going to cram school and ballet and tennis and all kinds of stuff. The last thing that these men want from those women, those little young girls that they're investing in is to see those girls pop up pregnant without, you know, a commitment from a man who is upwardly mobile. They're not playing that feminism, new age family, you know, give me the sperm and the, and the resources and I'll take it from there. They're not playing that game. This women are lapping men and, and men got to catch up with women, just drop off the sperm and the resources. We, we got it. They're not playing that. They're not playing that game. And I'll be honest with you. You people talk about passport bros and, and the people going after guys or of the ladies one of the reasons why i passport bro is because simply put i want my daughter to grow up in a culture that that marriage is the norm it's not even the norm anymore in american culture there's you just spit out babies now and no there is no culture on this planet that wants to mimic the situation in the black community now they will mimic our culture they will mimic our dance and our athletic ability, but they're not trying to mimic our three out of four children being born out of wedlock. No upperly mobile society is trying to do that. And to see women of this stature in Isha Sisei and Osaka Naomi play the same feminism 
break, broken family with kids out of wedlock game is this is dispiriting. But that's just where we are now. So when you see guys passport growing, a lot of guys are passport growing because of the culture, not just to get women. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, feel free to comment down below and let me know what you think. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Later, guys.